Eric Darling here, uh, fresh from a full day of celebrating freedom, and back to work for you, because, uh, I don't know, do I work for you? I might. I might work for some of you who watch. <laughs> maybe, maybe, not, maybe not enough. Maybe, maybe I should work for more of you who watch. That'd be nice. Then I could just, then I could just do this all day, and I wouldn't have to, like do stuff over there that on the computer you can't see. So that'd be cool. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we're going to, in this video, I'm going to answer a question that I answer uh, 70 to 80 times a week. And it is, uh, why do you have one equals select one in your queries? And the funny thing is that uh, everyone who asked me that question asked me that in, in a comment. Uh, and what's, what, what, what amuses me, I suppose, is that if you were to type, what's the point of one equals select one into any, into any search engine, even, even dumb Bing can f find it, uh, you, would, you would find my New York Times best-selling blog post called, what's the point of one equals select one in SQL Server queries? And uh, you, would, you would see uh, nearly the same text instead of demos appearing in this SQL Server management window in handy, easy to read blog format. So uh, in this video, I'm going to read my blog post to you um, and hopefully you will watch it and hopefully uh, this will be available as a, as a secondary resource for anyone who, who looks at one of my demos and is puzzled by the presence of one equals select one. So here we go. Uh, we are already using the correct database. I believe we have already dropped all of the indexes we can possibly drop. So we're, we're good there, right? That's excellent news. We're, we're in good shape, you and me. Uh, so the main reasons for uh, using one equals select one in SQL Server queries is to avoid two things. <clears throat> one is a trivial plan, because trivial plans can hide all sorts of, or uh, preclude the inclusion, yeah, academics, uh, of, of certain optimizations that um, you only get when the optimization level is full. Uh, so that's, that's one, one good reason. Um, and uh, I often use it in my demo queries because I want to write the simplest possible demo query to show the behavior, the behavior I want you to see as possible. Uh, the trouble is that, you know, sometimes when the, the simplest query uh, doesn't work out either because the trivial plan does not get me the optimization thing that I want, or people see the, uh, the, the, the simple parameterization thing kick in and get very confused. Like, is that forced parameterization? Like, what's, what's wrong with your database? Is it broken? Why is that parameter there? And it's kind of funny. Um, so in some ways, I think that writing slightly more complicated queries would be less distracting to the casual viewer um, than, than, than just putting one equals select one in there. Uh, to get to do what I want. The trouble with writing more complicated queries is uh, they, they become more prone to failing. Uh, the demo gods are, are harsh, harsh gods. They, uh, I don't know, they, they hate me sometimes. <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, there we go. Anyway, so some examples of, uh, you know, things like I'm talking about. One equals select one important stuff. Things you should know, and I'm not suggesting that you should put in one equals select one in, in all of your queries, but if you're writing demos or you're just testing stuff out, it can kind of be a neat thing to see if it changes anything. So here's an example where I'm going to run these two queries, and we're going to look at these two execution plans. And of course, uh, as, as promised, this query up here... Uh, is simple parameterized. Um, you might be able to tell by looking at some of this stuff and realizing Eric Darling is not a dork and does not put square brackets 
on around every absolutely everything in his query and eric darling is the kind of guy who properly uses as when aliasing alias is aliasing things aslusian aslusian looking things uh so this query is clearly not exactly the one that i wrote it's also got a little parameter over here way at the end called at one fascinating absolutely fascinating stuff you might be even more fascinated to learn that this is a trivial plan right we can see the optimization level trivial here and we can see kind of a strange thing with the parameter list where uh sql server inferred the data type of the number two as a tiny int if we were to write queries with uh, a number one higher than the max of tiny int small int uh, int and big int, we would see the data type change for the parameter of each one of these. Um, at some point, uh, with the, um, the, 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 the largest, the int max and the big int max, it starts using like weird decimal types though. It doesn't explicitly use, uh, uh, big int, int, big int, sorry. So that's one reason why, right? So we can see that SQL Server clearly does slightly more thoughtful optimization with the second query that has one equals select one on it, because the second query, of course, SQL Server says, hey, have you thought about adding an index to make this faster? Now, you know, 188 milliseconds isn't terribly slow. Fine. I know. But it, uh, sometimes it's the thought that counts. Hmm? You might al also notice that uh, this query is written much more in the style of Eric Darling, where we have a proper as uh, for our alias, 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 and we don't have dorky square brackets around things that don't need them, right? So cool. SQL Server gave me my query back. <laughs> stop stop enfor forcing its stupid query formatting on my beautifully written and formatted query. Bug off, SQL Server. Sod off, Swampy, as a wise man once said. Uh, so what gets fully optimized, right? Um, the, it, aside from like, you know, one equals select one, uh, all sorts of things get fully optimized. And, but generally they require SQL Server to have to make some sort of cost-based decision about what the cheapest way to do something is. So join, subqueries, aggregations, ordering without a supporting index, lots of stuff that, you know, where all of a sudden SQL Server has to do more than figure out, I just have to select some rows from one table where this column equals a thing. Easy peasy. I don't have to, there's not a lot of cost-based decision making in that process, unless there are multiple indexes involved. Of course, your tables all have multiple indexes involved. So the likelihood of you needing to write one equals select one and like a production query are, are pretty low. So let's, uh, let's looking at these two queries, right? We're just gonna select the top 1000 uh, IDs grouped by ID, which of course is meaningless because ID is all, uh, what do you call it? Unique values, it is the clustered primary key of the table. And the reputation column of course is very un-unique, un, un <laughs> very un-unique uh, as a column. And uh, so, you know, these obviously return different results because we're doing different things. But this query right here, if we look at this, we are with a trivial plan once again because there is no cost-based decision to make. This, this one down here is not a trivial plan. This is a fully optimized plan. And the reason this one is fully optimized is, of course, because SQL Server had to choose what to do in here. Right? This operator represents a cost-based decision, and this operator is why I, I, you know, SQL Server was like, oh, I'm going to fully optimize this thing because I need to think about how to group this, co this column. Am I going to use a stream aggregate? Am I going to use a regular hash match? Do I want to use a partial aggregate first? And at the end, it shows a, a hash match flow distinct. Right? That was apparently the cheapest one. So happy times there. Happy, happy times. Uh, so one, one reason, or uh, it's a good way to put this, uh, one situation where using one equals select one isn't necessary is if you have, uh, an index, if you have multiple indexes on a table. Now this index right here has absolutely nothing to do with this query, right? We're, we're not you, like, this is just on creation date and the rest of these bottom two queries have nothing to do with the column creation date. For the first two queries that do have a lot to do with the column creation date, 
if we run these, uh, we will see uh, the first query. Again, look at this ugly, awful f square bracket dork formatting and no as with the alias shame on you SQL server. Uh, and the bottom query, of course, does with the one equals select one, this looks more like what, what I wrote, right? We can see the literal for the date. We don't have this thing get uh, substituted with a parameter. And so this is one of those things that where, you know, where one equals select one takes a little bit of like the, the confusion out of either like me zooming in, like, you know, doing a video like this, presenting live, uh, taking screenshots for, another, for, a, for a presentation. And like when I zoom in and like show the query text of a query, sometimes it's kind of confusing when people don't see the exact query that they just saw me run. And so for a lot of times, just for clarity, it makes a lot more sense. Even if I don't include the one equals select one portion in the screenshot, it makes a lot more sense for me to take a screenshot of, of just this part so that like you can see that it is actually the query that I just I was just talking about running with the literal values. If I told you I was running a query and then you saw this in the screenshot, you'd be like, where the hell did that come from? Is that is that in the store procedure now? Where, where, Eric, what, what, that looks nothing like the query you executed. Are you insane? Right. So there's 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 reasons. Right? There's reasons for these things. Some of them, some of these reasons are presentation layer reasons. Other them, other others of them are truly. Uh, query optimization reasons. And now, if we look at these two queries, now look, look, I, I agree that the second query is absolutely absurdly ridiculous, right? There is absolutely no need, no reason to ever use this index for the query that we're running because it's only on the creation date column. But um, having this superfluous non-clustered index around uh, actually makes, right, because th this is a valid plan choice. Right, this SQL Server would would cost this choice and say, "Oh, maybe no," uh, but having that around is the reason why this uh, top query. Now, to make things even kind of weirder, uh, here this is this is where your your noodles really going to get baked because look what we have here. Right, this looks like simple parameterization, but over here we have a full op we have full optimization. Right, so sometimes you need even when you get full optimization for a query, sometimes you still need one equals select one to get rid of this ooky query text with the terrible dorky square brackets and the, and the lack of an as in the alias. So one equals select one has a, like some extra powers to it that even getting full optimization for a query doesn't have, you know, for like presentation stuff like this. So that, that's, that's another good thing to keep in mind. Now, uh, the other problem that you might run into with trivial plans, and this is something that I see a lot. So, like, you know, I think they, were, they used to be a lot more common. Um, I, 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 forget, I forget exactly. There were, there were a few people who would always write articles uh, comparing the query optimizer, the query optimizer's abilities with, like, MySQL or Postgres and SQL Server or Oracle or DB2 or, like, you know, a whole bunch of different relational query engines. The, the problem is that, like, they, they may have had some specialty in, like, MySQL and or Postgres and or Oracle and or something else, but they were, they were pretty stupid about SQL Server. And there were things that they didn't know to look for and there were things that they just didn't have the expertise in. To, to like understand what like why things were different between certain engines. Now, granted, uh, you probably shouldn't need a very very deep understanding uh, to understand why SQL Server might uh, use a look at a check constraint in, in one in one engine, but then not do it in SQL Server. Uh, but that was the case for a lot of things. Um, there, you know, this and this was this was this is a pretty good example of that. So if I add uh, this constraint to the users table, right, which just validates that every reputation in the users table is greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to two million, because at this point in time, John Skeet still does not have two million reputations. I forget, I forget what he's up to. It's been a while since I looked. Maybe I'll check in after this video. But then if I run these two queries, and look at the execution plans. Both of them return zero rows. And of course, here's where the demo gods have absolutely betrayed me because you know what I didn't do? I didn't drop this index on creation date. So let's, 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 let's remember to add that to the demo script next time 
and let's let's make sure that Eric Darling does a hundred push-ups. <laughs> ah, my own petard. There we go. That's what I wanted. So, uh, th this first query uh, obviously scans the entire clustered index, looking for where reputation equals this substituted parameter. Now, SQL Server needed a plan, right, since this is a trivial plan with, with simple parameterization. SQL Server needed an execution plan that would be safe, to be cacheably safe for any other execution of this query where it would maybe hit, a rep, maybe it would be looking for a reputation where, um, you know, what do you call it, like it might exist in the table. <laughs> so, like, I'm searching for zero here. Right? My, my search is for someone with a reputation of zero, and this query rightly does a constant scan because this query doesn't get simple parameterization. This, uh, this query doesn't get a trivial plan, and so SQL Server can logically detect that this query is not going like, to return any rows. We can just skip the whole thing. With this query, of course, it can't do that because of the parameter substitution over here. It has to say, well, if someone searches for reputation equals one or two or three or ten or five million next, we might need to actually look and see the return rows from the table. We have to go figure that out. So if SQL Server wants to cache and reuse this plan, it can't be the constant scan because the constant scan doesn't touch the table, doesn't return any rows, and blah, 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 blah. It's a lot like how... Um, well, I mean, not a lot like how, but it is reasonably close to sort of the neighborhood of why uh, if you create a filtered index on, let's say, creation date and then in, like a store procedure or in, in an entity, f like an ORM query, you're like you have a you pass a parameter to search for creation date. SQL Server can't use that filtered index because, of course, you know, it, like it has to cache and reuse a, a parameterized plan where you some some parameter values might uh, qualify to use a filtered index and some might not, right? So like it's it's sort of similar to that where like the cached and reused plan has to be safe for anyone, but or the cached and reusable plan has to be safe for everyone. But, you know, a, a more specific, like, you know, more optimized for the literal value plan. Like, if you put option recompile or something on it, like, that would be, like, a, like a, a more, a plan, a plan that's more specifically geared towards the query you're running than a good, than a general plan that would work for any set of parameters. So, I'm glad I got that off my chest, finally. Uh, it feels good. It feels real good. I feel like I stretched. I don't know. I feel like I slept 18 hours. Just kidding. Uh, after after my July Fourth, it's going to be a while before I feel like I slept eighteen hours. Uh, there was a lot of mezcal and brisket, uh, which is a bit of an odd combo, but trust me on this one. Uh, they go well together. I am a fan. I am a newfound fan of mezcal and brisket in one mouth, all in the same mouth. So, with that, with that, with that off, with that additionally off my chest. Um, Eric's cooking tips: <laughs> put mezcal and brisket in mouth, mix, stir thoroughly. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm glad you made it to the end with me. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope that you learned something. Uh, and of course, you know, as usual, if you like this sort of SQL Server content, please subscribe to my channel. Join the nearly 3,824 other data darlings who get notified when, 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 I, when I present these little bits of my love to you, when I show you my love. Uh, if you like this video, um, comments, thumbs ups, things, things like that are nice. Um, and as promised in my last video, I got a haircut. The whole thing, whole head. Uh, granted, it's looking a little dicey up there. Um, I might I might do something about that because that's that's a little that's a little bit much for a man of my 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 incredibly young young age. If I want to if I want to retain my my beer gut magazine accolade of being the youngest and most handsome SQL Server consultant in the known universe, and I I should might want to put some put some serum on that. Maybe grow a, grow a little bit of that hair back. <laughs> Uh, also, like if I if I don't do that, you know, my maybe my my hair my hair my hair guy will you know go out of business and starve and lose his house and his car. That'd just be depressing. I got to keep getting haircuts to make the world keep going around. You know, that's why why we all do the things we do. Keep keep the ball spinning.
So anyway, I'm going to go now. Thank you for watching. Uh, and I'll see you in another video shortly. Thank you. Goodbye.